Here are the progressive headlines for today, August 18th, 2020. Bernie Sanders spoke to the country in a primetime address at the Virtual Democratic National Convention last night. He warned of the existential dangers of handing President Donald Trump a second term. He called the 2020 election the most important modern election in U.S. history, one in which the survival of democracy, the economy, and the planet hangs in the balance. And he urged the nation to unite to ensure he is defeated in November. While Sanders noted his significant disagreement with Biden on key issues of Medicare for all, he vote, voiced confidence that if elected in November, Biden will move forward with a policy agenda to make the U.S. more equitable, more compassionate, and more inclusive. Here's a clip of Bernie Sanders uh, speaking last night. Nation is now living in an unprecedented moment. We're facing the worst public health crisis in 100 years and the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression. We are confronting systemic racism and the enormous threat to our planet of climate change. And in the midst of all of this, we have a president who is not only incapable of addressing these crises, but is leading us down the path of authoritarianism. This election is the most important in the modern history of this country. In response to the unprecedented crises we face, we need an unprecedented response, a movement like never before, of people who are prepared to stand up and fight for democracy and decency and against greed, oligarchy, and bigotry. And we need Joe Biden as our next president. Because that's the only choice. So, <laughs> I mean, really, that's what he goes on to say. We could watch a little bit more if you want. But he, if you missed it last night, he goes on to say that this is an existential crisis and that it is important. The, the DNC had John Kasich on last night. So they appealed to Republicans who are uncomfortable with Donald Trump. They appealed to, um, you know, they appealed to progressives, super progressives who are uncomfortable with Joe Biden. Everybody got together to say, uh, we need to get rid of Trump. So I hope everyone who is in our audience agrees with that, or at least if they aren't thrilled about Joe Biden as, as he's not progressive enough, et cetera, you know, this time you're really not voting for Joe Biden. You're voting for existence anyway. So there's that. I stick with that. I know I'm getting a lot of pushback from, is it trolls or is it people whose opinions line up with trolls? That's a little scary. Um, but that's where we are. That's where we are today. Michelle Obama spoke last night. She was incredibly um, well-spoken and she came across as somebody who was actually quite worried. Here's a little piece of Michelle Obama. Oh, we have to watch an Amazon commercial somehow. <laughs> what do we do now? This is a war. They don't even let you skip it, so I'll just talk over it, even though I had it totally cued for you. But anyway, here we are. It's a hard time, and everyone's feeling it in different ways. And I know a lot of folks are reluctant to tune into a political convention right now or to politics in general. Believe me, I get that. But I am here tonight because I love this country with all my heart. And it pains me to see so many people hurting. I've met so many of you. I've heard your stories. And through you, I have seen this country's promise. And thanks to so many who came before me, thanks to their toil and sweat and blood, I've been able to live that promise myself. That's the story of America. All those folks who sacrificed and overcame so much in their own times because they wanted something more, something better for their kids. There's a lot of beauty in that story. There's a lot of pain in it too. A lot of struggle and injustice and work left to do. And who we choose as our president in this election 
will determine whether or not we honor that struggle and chip away at that injustice. Michelle, it was so good to see her. <laughs> she, you know, this, this, the tone that she had had so much to do with, you know, basically how, how dangerous everything is. I'm going to fast forward to the end of her speech. You can watch the whole thing at CNN Politics, but the end was pretty powerful. Let me see if I can get it to you. You're mustering up unimaginable courage to put on those scrubs and give our loved ones a fighting chance. Even when you're anxious, you're delivering those packages, stocking those shelves and doing all that essential work so that all of us can keep moving forward. Even when it all feels so overwhelming, working parents are somehow piecing it all together without child care. Teachers are getting creative so that our kids can still learn and grow. Our young people are desperately fighting to pursue their dreams. And when the horrors of systemic racism shook our country and our consciences, Millions of Americans of every age, every background rose up to march for each other, crying out for justice and progress. This is who we still are. Compassionate, resilient, decent people whose fortunes are bound up with one another. And it is well past time for our leaders to once again reflect our truth. So, well said to us to add our voices and our votes to the course of history, echoing heroes like John Lewis who said, when you see something that is not right, you must say something, you must do something. Beautiful. Michelle Obama speaking at the Democratic uh, Convention. The, you know, the one that was on TV last night because uh, we can't get together because uh, COVID-19. So um, more speakers are coming on tonight. I think the Clintons, um, uh, AOC has been given 60 seconds. I don't know what we want to make of that. It seems like not enough. At least that's the rumor. We'll see what happens tonight. So can keep watching there. A group of voters from several states and candidates for public office are suing Donald Trump and the Postmaster General, alleging that their ongoing assault to the U.S. Postal Service unlawfully threatens Americans' right to vote amid, of course, the pandemic. Among the plaintiffs in the suit is Mondari Jones, a progressive activist and attorney who won the Democratic primary for New York's 17th Congressional District in June, running on Medicare for All, a Green New Deal, uh, tuition-free public college, and all the good progressive things that you would want. In a series of tweets Monday, Jones wrote that we've all watched in horror this week as Trump and DeJoy have been stab sabotaging the USPS, postal boxes ripped out, Overtime halted, mail sorting machines destroyed. You can contact your representatives to voice your support for the USPS and show those that wish to dismantle and privatize the Postal Service that we are against letting one of our prized institutions fail. It's time. It's time. And after weeks of organizing and pressure from activists, DeJoy's office announced that he will appear before the House Oversight Committee at a hearing on August 24th. Coming up, committee member Katie Porter tweeted, I hope the Postmaster General comes prepared. I know I will. Ooh, I love it when she threatens. Awesome. DeJoy, a Republican mega donor who holds investments in private companies that compete with the Postal Service. It's disgusting. But there should be a law that you're not allowed to do that. Hmm. Uh, anyway, he has taken actions to remove sorting machines, as I'm sure you heard, and the post office drop boxes from your town and other locations across the country. Top Democrats in the House and Senate called on DeJoy to explain his actions as the USPS itself warned that 46 states last week that it might not have capacity to get the mail-in ballots sent by voters to their polling stations in time to be counted in November. 
This is a story we have to watch closely. We have invited uh, one of our previous guests who was the head of a postal workers union to come back on and talk with us about what this means about for, for the workers and what this means for the country. So hopefully we'll be able to, to get him back on. Stay tuned to Act TV for all the good talk. Arizona State University scientists announced yesterday that their research uncovered micro and nanoplastics in human organs for the first time. Greenpeace UK responded to the reporting on the study called, uh, you know, a ma <laughs> they're calling to massively reduce the amount of plastic produced and used worldwide. Previous research has shown that people could be eating a credit card's worth of plastic a day. Uh, a study published in 2019 suggested humans eat, drink, and breathe almost 74,000 microplastic particles a year. Plastic particles in wildlife have been shown to substantially harm entire ecosystems, especially marine organisms. You can help fight the plastic pollution at greenpeace.org. They're doing a good job fighting. Let's see what we can do. So, you know, stopping and starting a green energy economy and letting petroleum products, stay, you know, petroleum stay in the earth. It's a good way to stop plastic since plastic is run by the, it's all connected. Everybody knows. Unions and environmental groups are demanding the Trump administration use the Defense Production Act to get PPE to essential workers. I can't believe they haven't done that yet already. But, you know, new petitions out there, people working for it. An emergency rulemaking petition has been sent to the Secretaries of Health and Human Services and Homeland Security. It requests a nationwide inventory, increased production, and prioritization of distribution of respirators, gloves, gowns, and other equipment needed to protect workers from COVID-19. The petition requests the Secretaries of Health and Human Services and Homeland Security take the requested actions within 15 days. Mickey Siegel de Hernandez is Deputy Director of Health and Safety with Communications Workers of America, which represents health care workers. She said six months into the pandemic, there are still critical shortages. I think that's enough of a reason not to vote for Donald Trump and to get out and vote in whatever way you can uh, for whoever else is running. Biden, Kamala Harris, we got to get the job done. We can't tinker. We can't move the deck chairs on Titanic anymore. This is the next step. I'm Juliana Forlano. You're watching Act TV. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. I love to see your comments down below. I love it when you say, Juliana must have drank the Kool-Aid. Well, no, Juliana has opinions. What can I tell you? Those are, that's, that's what my favorite comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next.